Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to explore something we've looked at before. We looked at what happens to an object when the object reaches the speed of light or tries to approach the speed of light because in the previous video, we mentioned that there's no possible way an object could ever reach the speed of light. The reason for that is because as an object goes faster and faster and faster, it appears as if the mass gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And here on this graph here, it illustrates that as the object reaches half the speed of light or 86.6% of the speed of light or 99% of the speed of light, the mass would continue to increase and increase. And eventually, according to this equation, the equation that we have up here, the mass would become infinite as the object reaches the speed of light. But one of the viewers from the previous video sent in a note saying, well, how can that be? How can an object reach an infinite mass? What changes in the object to make that possible? And that is actually a very good question. And that person wasn't the first one that would ask that question. Many people before has wrestled with the concept of how can an object reach infinite mass? Laboratory experiments, such as the one over here, where we accelerated small particles to very, very high velocities. For example, if we take a proton and speed it up to 99% of the speed of light, it would act as if it has seven times the mass. And then when we make it collide with another proton that is at rest, whose mass is equal to the rest mass, the collision and then the equations that follow with the conservation momentum would actually prove that this object acted as if it had seven times the mass. But does it actually have seven times the mass? Even Einstein had problems accepting that. He came up with this statement saying that there's no clear definition of an object reaching infinite mass, and it is better to express the mass as the momentum and energy of a body in motion rather than an increase in mass. Equations were developed like this one where the total energy squared is equal to the rest mass squared plus the momentum times the speed of light squared. If we manipulate this equation, properly so, mathematically and physically correct, so that the momentum times the speed of light can be written as this, we plug that into the equation and eventually we come up with a different equation where the momentum can be expressed in terms of the rest mass times the velocity divided by this quantity right here just like we have it over here. And notice as V becomes equal to C, when V becomes equal to C, this becomes one, one minus one is zero, and anything divided by zero becomes infinite. So Einstein had the concept that instead of thinking that the mass becomes infinite, why don't we assume that the momentum becomes infinite? Of course, that's still somewhat of a problem because momentum is actually the product of the mass times the velocity. So since the velocity doesn't become infinite, how can the momentum become infinite if the mass doesn't become infinite? So that problem is still there. But since Einstein could not envision that an object reached infinite mass, there had to be some other explanation in how an object changes as it gets closer to the speed of light. And in this case, the momentum is actually changing. And that would indeed explain this phenomenon right here without having to go to an infinite mass. The concept is, what is momentum as momentum reaches infinity? Other individuals, such as Taylor and Wheeler, who's done experiments and research in this, they said, to the concept of infinite mass, it makes it seem like there's some change in the internal structure of the object. Well, to reach infinite mass, something must be happening to make the mass bigger. In reality, the increase of energy with velocity originates not in the object, but in the geometric properties of space itself. A lot of people began to think there must be something about space most people think of space as just the emptiness of the universe, but that's not really true. Space is actually some fabric of something that we don't really understand very well. We know that when we put an object like mass in space, it bends space, creating the concept of gravity. I did say the concept of gravity because gravity isn't really a force like Newton claimed it was. It's simply a warping of space, and Einstein proved that. Also, when we put charged objects in space, those charged objects cause electric fields to exist around them. And then we know that those electric fields can then move through space, or the change in the electric field can move through space in the form of electromagnetic radiation. And that has a limited speed, the speed of light. And the speed of light, as Maxwell discovered, was equal to 1 divided by the square root of the permittivity of free space and the permeability of free space, which controls the speed at which the electromagnetic waves can actually move to space, and therefore the speed of light is limited. So, 
when we try to move these objects through space at near the speed of light, the electric field then has to move through space near the speed of light, and we know there's a limit there that cannot be broken. So something must be happening to the objects. More and more energy is required to get the object to move faster and faster and faster, and it may appear as if, instead of the object gaining mass, the object is gaining momentum. Again, it's hard to understand because momentum is indeed the product of the mass times the velocity. So, another way of thinking about it is as follows. If this triangle represents the relationship between the rest mass, the total energy of the particle, and the momentum of the particle, notice at small speeds, the increase in momentum is relatively small, and the total energy of the particle is mostly the rest mass energy, and a very small amount of it is the kinetic energy gained by moving faster. But as the speed of, of the object increases tremendously, notice a very small portion of the total energy is related to the rest mass energy, and a very large percentage is caused by the increase in momentum. And so the total energy is primarily the kinetic energy and a very small amount of the rest mass energy. Again, we think of it in terms of an increase in momentum, which experimentally seems to be justified and it doesn't leave us with this big problem of how we explain infinite mass, even though the objects act as if they reach infinite mass when they start moving at the speed of light. It's quite a puzzle. We need some very smart people to continue working this until we can finally understand it. And by the way, if anyone figures this out, I am certain there's a Nobel Prize waiting for you at the end of that discussion.